Hey there, Susie here. Before we get into today's episode, I want to share this special message with you. Now, my co-host Michelle and I love masterminds. Not only do we belong to masterminds, but we also host a mastermind. We started it almost eight years ago, and it is the premier mastermind for women business owners who want to grow their business with a specific focus on marketing. Now, this group is usually completely booked out, and very occasionally we open the doors and invite a handful of women in. So if you're growing your business, but you're struggling with feeling overwhelmed, or like you constantly have a split focus when it comes to your marketing, this could be exactly what you're looking for. We have an amazing time together and the women in the group are extraordinary. They're great cheerleaders, supporters, advisors and colleagues for you. And they're also seeing extraordinary results. We see people cracking the million dollar, two million dollar, three million dollar mark, launching new e-commerce sites that go from zero to ten thousand dollars a month in sales. They're doubling their conversion rates, they're growing memberships, they're selling courses, they're growing their personal brands, and they're getting all kinds of media exposure and speaking opportunities and so much more. You can learn more about the Mastermind and join the wait list over at herbusinessmastermind.com. We're going to open the doors soon, so you definitely want to be on the list to get an invitation. So head on over to herbusinessmastermind.com. Create content that attracts, converts, and keeps your ideal clients. This is Content Cells. Hi, you're listening to the Content Cells podcast, the show all about how to create content to attract, convert, and keep your ideal clients. Welcome to episode 47. I'm Susie Daphnis, and here with me is my co host, Michelle Falson. Hey, Michelle. Hey there, Susie. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing great. I'm really looking forward to today's episode. I think it's mm. uh, one that people are going to be able to implement right away. Um, I agree. It's a goodie. I'm, I'm looking forward to diving on into it. Good. Well, today we're going to be talking about how to use power words to instantly attract attention and ignite sales. And we're going to look at creating a toolbox of words and phrases that really help you promote your products and services and your ideas. Um, and you can use these in all types of content, whether it's something you're saying, something you're writing, something you're doing on a video. Now, before we get deeper into today's episode, I want to let you know that we've prepared a special resource for you. And it's a free download called Power Word Resource List. And what it does is give you really easy access to effective words right when you need them. And it makes knowing the right words to use really, really easy. You're going to find that download over at herbusiness.com forward slash power words. So as I said a moment ago, the episode title for today is how to use power words to instantly attract attention and ignite sales. And maybe you noticed what we did right there with the title, we slipped in a few power words and we're <laughs> going to be sharing more examples of specific power words in just a little bit. But to start off with, Michelle, tell us what we mean by power words. Sure. Well, we all know Words are powerful. A well-written movie can make us laugh or cry, a powerful ad, you know, it can make us buy something or donate money to a cause. And, you know, a stirring speech can get us voting for a particular candidate or changing our behavior in some way. Um, even things, you know, like a generous or a caring note from a friend when we're feeling down can cheer us up and help us feel more connected. So words are powerful, but there are some words that are way more powerful than others. These are the words that persuade and influence, influence us uh, in ways that the other words just don't. And they're what's known as power words. And when it comes to creating content that's aimed at attracting, converting, and keeping your ideal clients, which is, you know, the point of this Content Sales podcast, mm -hmm. uh, you really want to employ these power words whenever possible in your headlines, in your product names, your presentations, even your one-on-one -on -one conversations with your customers. Mm. And one of the things that we can easily fall into, and I know I've done this, is to keep using the same old words that I've always done to describe something we do or an outcome or the way we talk about a product or service. Um, and it's something that sort of we think is tried and tested, but mm. maybe it's not working. But maybe it's a mm. word that everyone in our industry uses and that's how we fell into it. But what's happening is we're just not standing out. Um, and this is what Michelle refers to as marketing blah, blah. 
Yeah, don't you love that? See, there's there's something that stands out a little bit, marketing <laughs> blah, blah. <laughs> uh, and you know marketing blah, blah when you say it because if you took the name of the company out of whatever the marketing blah, blah is saying and replaced it with just about any other company name, nobody would notice. And so um, what I did uh, as we were preparing for this episode was I Googled, I just thought, oh, what's a phrase that's just so marketing blah, blah, you know, like, um, there was a few that came to mind, like, um, you know, we'll help you meet your strategic objectives is one. But the one that I Googled was, um, I Googled the phrase, take your business to the next level. That's one of my favorites. And I've done <laughs> it. I know when I'm not lazy, I, I find myself writing it in copy. And then I slap myself about and go, marketing, blah, blah. Anyway, I put this phrase in and I got 3,040,000 results. That's to the whole phrase. You know, I put the inverted commas around the phrase. So 3,040,000 times somebody has put the phrase, take your business to the next level online. So that is a really, shall we say, overused phrase. Yes, that's probably one and not to use. <laughs> that's one that would, has had the power drained out of it. And um, what I, I just looked at some of the search results and there were many, many, many like this one I'm going to share with you. So I'm not going to mention the company name. It's not about pointing fingers. Like I said, I've done it. But have a look at this for some classic marketing blah, blah. We help you take, this is on their website, mm -hmm. we help you take your business to the next level with our depth of knowledge, decades of experience, and wide variety of solutions to realize all your communications objectives. That's a doozy. <laughs> it is a doozy because that could be anybody of those right. how many millions. Uh, so it could be a telecommunications company, an ad agency, a small business. It could be your business. I'm going to go and Google our site make sure that term doesn't show up anywhere. <laughs> uh, and um, there's nothing in a phrase like that that's going to capture anyone's attention or make you stand out in any good way uh, from the rest of your competitors or really convey how wonderful and unique you really are. And um, we talked in an earlier episode about finding your mojo when it comes to creating your content. Content. And there's definitely no mojo in a phrase like that. Um, a mm. mojo free phrase. Right. No, just <laughs> <laughs> so, what are we doing when we're adding power words into our language? Um, if we use a term that's uh, from behavioural psychology, what we're doing is we're creating a pattern interrupt. And a pattern interrupt is the technique technique that you can use to arrest someone. So to change a particular thought or behavior or situation. So for instance, um, you could be walking across the street and someone is deep in thought and you simply say hi, right? Or it can be that um, you make a big change in your life. So here I am living nine to five and suddenly I quit my job and I fly to Cuba to follow my dream of being a salsa dancer. Big interruption to the pattern of my life. Salsa dancing. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to go to Cuba though, um, but I digress. So pattern interrupt. I kind of just did a little bit of a pattern interrupt there, but um, – I use pattern interrupts all the time when my kids were little. Uh, for example, if we were on a long car trip and they were getting bored or upset, I would pretty quickly do something to distract them and get it, get them out of that particular pattern. I became an expert at the pattern interrupt. You know, maybe I turned on some music or I started reading a book or suddenly every cow in the paddock that we were going past was incredibly fascinating. Let's all look at the cow. <laughs> I can really see you doing that, actually. Oh, just my being... goodness. <laughs> I came uh, with sound effects. Too. I'm, sure, I'm sure. Lots of moving arms and uh, <laughs> animation. Um, you should see me now. <laughs> um, but that's a great analogy for uh, what can happen when you add a power word or something unexpected to your content because you're just waking people up and you're causing them to stop and take notice because you're doing something that's unusual and unexpected and you're snapping them out of whatever they were thinking about um, and causing them to tune their attention into exactly what you're saying. And that's very powerful. So suddenly it's not marketing blah, blah. It's not what they were expecting. Um, and the reason that we want to add some pattern interrupts to our content is because of the deluge <laughs> of thoughts. Um, 
So apparently each of us has an average of about 50,000 thoughts a day. Now, Michelle, I think some days I might tip the scales. <laughs> Because it gets pretty <laughs> crazy out <up> there. <laughs> I was wondering which direction, because some days I don't know that I have that many. A- any yet. thoughts at all. <laughs> <laughs> so if we have that many thoughts, that's one thing. But the studies also show that most of those thoughts, 95%, are the same thoughts that you had yesterday. And that's according to a study from the National Science Foundation. So that's a staggering statistic to me, Michelle. And, and it shows me how much of a rut we can be in in our thinking. Um, And that's partly because we have these routines. We get up, we get ready, we check email, we get the kids off to school, we make sure there's milk in the fridge, there's fuel in the car, we check, did we leave the iron on, what's happening on Facebook, and we do this over and over again. And all these thoughts that we think over and over again can cause us to be in a bit of a a trance-like state. Mm. Yeah, that's so true. And you know, it's hard to be a, be aware of that trance-like state. And so when we understand that's the situation that the people who are reading our content are in, we want to be, you know, breaking into that trance when people read our stuff or come into our office for an appointment or watch our video or read our Facebook post or have any kind of interaction with us. And if we use that marketing blah, blah, it's not going to cut the mustard. So the first piece of advice we want to give you today Um, as we drill into some detail around these power words, is just to become aware of how boring some of Mm. your content is. (laughs) And I I don't mean to sound mean. It's something I'm doing all the time as well, really trying to be diligent against slipping into marketing blah, blah myself because boring content bores people. So don't choose the boring word or phrase or that overused cliche or idea. The idea here is to pause Have your radar up for when you can swap out a boring word for a power word. So, for example, say you're an accountant and you're publishing an article or writing an email or a Facebook post about mistakes to avoid when submitting your tax return. So instead of saying something like seven tax return mistakes to avoid, which is what everybody else in your industry Mm. is saying, it's maybe what you've said a thousand times before, Um, you want to stop. You want to do that pause moment and think, hmm, Michelle and Susie told me to use a power word. (laughs) (laughs) So what is something super awesome I can put here instead? Something that is not ho-hum, something that really will stop people in their tracks, something that is going to break them out of that trance that they're in. So, for example, you could change that to seven mistakes that will make the tax man cringe or seven cringe-worthy tax return mistakes you want to avoid. And in that instance, the power word, which I'm sure you picked up there, was cringe. You don't hear accountants use that word all the time. It's a pattern interrupt word. I love that example. And it it's just so easy to say what we've always said and mm. um, to let things, you know, like that blah, blah you mentioned earlier or to say at the end of the day or uh, it's just mm. easy and it is a little lazy. And so mm. I think what we're asking people to do is to have more um, intention and awareness about what you're writing. Um, and we're not trying to shock people, but we're no. just trying to break them out of the trance. I come to our website. There's this ad at the moment, um, at the moment in Sydney, the St. George Open Air Cinema is on. Can I tell a quick story, Michelle? Oh, I'd love, I love stories. <laughs> uh, and just before the main movie comes on, there's uh, sponsor ads. And one of the sponsors is Mount Franklin Water. And... There are so many ways that you could do an ad about water, but there's this idiot (laughs) (laughs) character that they've manufactured who speaks about water and it's so nonsensical that he starts speaking and then after a while you go, what is he saying? And the whole 30 seconds of it is these bizarre stories that he's telling about water, but they're so ridiculous. Like he's making these parallels between things that are nothing to do with water and water. But he's got you there the whole time. Even if you think he's an idiot like I do, there's no way I'm going to forget that it's Mount Franklin water or that particular ad. Um, Mm. But had they said, you know, cleaner, purer from, you know, the centre of Mount Franklin, 
I might have just, you know, kept chatting, waiting for the movie to start. So. It's a perfect example, Susie, because the other thing is we don't just interrupt people's patterns with um, the words that we use, but in that instance, you, your mind has already mapped what a water ad looks like. You've seen water ads before, mm. you've read the packaging, so you were expecting words like pure and crystal clear and there was a certain amount of language that you could have just filed away and that ad would have just never broken through. But because they didn't use those words, that was incredibly powerful. So the power words will be different depending on, um, you know, what industry you're in sometimes too. Mm. Yeah, you make a really good point there about, you know, what are the words that are associated with your industry that everyone's already saying. Um, okay, we have got some really juicy things uh, to help you move forward. So how do you start using these power words? We've got these three ideas uh, that we want to share with you for using power words in your content. And the first goes very much to what we were just talking about. And that first idea is to zig when everyone else is zagging. And by that, we mean you want to start putting words into your content that stand out, that are not usually used in your industry to explain the particular topic or product that you're talking about. So there's an organization called sumome.com. Sumo is in sumo wrestler. Um, and it's a website that provides free web tools. And they just recently published a list of 355 power words. So we're going to include a link to that um, in our download today. And the words that they um, included were things like startling, life-changing, savvy, gorgeous, crazy, intriguing. Now, these are creative and unusual words that you can use instead of using a boring word. So instead of saying the results increased, you could say there was a startling increase in the results or the results were life-changing. Now, sometimes we need to apply this idea of zigging while everyone else is zagging to ourselves. So remember what we were saying about um, how much of our thinking is repetitive, that there um, are likely some habitual things that you're doing with your content because we've all got our go-to words a little bit. They're like word ticks. <laughs> I find <laughs> one of mine is great. I always use I use great a lot, you know. And these um, go-to words we default to, um, or we think because everyone in the industry is talking in a particular way that we need to be talking in that way. But what you want to do is figure out how you can become more conscious of those habits and start to go against the grain a bit more deliberately. And a great way to do that is to do the pause that Michelle was referring to. So either in your writing or even after you've written, but before you click publish or mm -hmm. hit send, think, how can I add some power words to this? Uh, how can I zig while everyone else is zagging? Mm. Yeah, that's great advice. And interestingly, some of the words on that Sumo Me list also appear on a very famous list of power words that legendary ad executive and someone who I've learned a lot from and have looked up to, uh, David Ogilvy. And in 1963, uh, Ogilvy, Ogilvy published a list of 20 words that were proven to be the most influential in all of his ad campaigns. So we'll include a link to that in the free download for today's episode as well. Mm -hmm. It included words like now, quick, easy, and hurry. And that leads me on to our second tip for using power words to instantly attract attention and ignite sales. And that is, you want to be unapologetically directive. And this is a phrase I just love. Susie, I just heard it in the last month and I just it just keeps rolling around in my head. And I learned it from branding expert Jen Kim of masterbrand.me. Master it's a phrase she uses to describe the attributes of particular brands. But I also think it can apply to any business when it comes to creating calls to action. And a call to action is anytime you tell people what you want them to do next in your content. Mm. So it could be the link in your email asking them to click through to read your blog post or buy your product. It could be the text on your Facebook post inviting people to leave a comment, the text on your press ad just above your phone number asking people to call you. Whatever it is, you always want to know that your call to action, um, so what your call to action is before you start creating your content. And when you state your call to action, that's where you want to be using some power right. words. That's where you want to be unapologetically 
directive. And something that I, that I really love to share, and this has really helped me, and I'm sure it's going to help people that are listening, this is where you really want to make use of a very particular set of power words known as command verbs. So a verb, like we learned in school, a verb is a, is, a, is, is a doing word. It's a word that describes an action. So your call to action is definitely going to involve a verb of some kind, but you want that verb to be unapologetically directive. You want it to be a command verb. And when I say directive, I mean, you know, you're really clearly giving a direction. You're not being wishy-washy about it. So some good command verbs, some good power words for you to think about when you're creating your call to action. Uh, download, get, show me, order, and buy. Mm. They're all very directive words. They're telling people exactly what you want them to do next. And using command verbs like this in calls to action has increased conversions by as much as 40% in some studies. And there's one word on that list that is more powerful than all the others. It's just a little word, but its impact can be startling. Did you like what I did there, Susie? <laughs> <laughs> startling, is it? <laughs> startling. It's a startling result. Um, but that word is get. So try and use that word whenever you can in your calls to action. Any of the any of those um, command verbs, but particularly get. So for example, imagine you were a loan broker and you had a link on your website aimed at getting appointments that said, "Book your appointment here." You know, maybe we've all seen those. Maybe some mm. of us have got those on our website right now. But compare that with, "Get my best loan option now." Can you see how that? is a much more directive call to action. And it begins with that beautiful little word, get. Mm. And every time I've made this change, every time I've made um, my calls to action much more directive and use one of those power words, one of those command verbs, um, I've seen a lift in my conversion rates. And I'm not, uh, I'm not surprised and I'm just sort of doing a scan in my mind and I, and I know that when, you know, we do the equivalent of book your appointment here, it's mm -hmm. just pushing stuff through. It's just getting mm -hmm. it done. It's yeah. not conscious copywriting. <laughs> it's not yeah, like every, just, every oh, word matters. Go here for more information. Yeah. Click here too. Yeah. And we've had um, lo lots of success with the word uh, get as well. And the thing is telling your reader what to do is something that we can um, overlook or be very blah, blah about or try and be too clever with. But the more concise, concrete and direct we can be, the easier we're making it for the customer. And get is a word that's worked really well for us, I think because of its simplicity. Um, and mm. that leads into our next idea um, for using power words in your content. And that is it doesn't have to be flashy. Mm. And what we mean by that is though we started this episode with some of the flashier words and there's definitely a place for those. This isn't about being, you know, a thesaurus. Um, mm. And I want to give you a couple of examples of simple words like get that are humble sounding almost, <laughs> um, mm. but that really work. And the first one of those is you. And so wherever you can, avoid speaking to your audience in the third person. And that's using words like she, they, everyone. Because um, this puts a barrier between you and the person you're talking to. Instead, you want to speak in first and second person language, adding as much of the word you as you can actually put in there. <laughs> that way, mm -hmm. people you're speaking with feel like you're speaking directly to them and not to a faceless mass of people of which they are just one. For example, on our website, the very first thing people see when they arrive is this message. It says, welcome to her business. Your business is a doorway to freedom and you're ready for a breakthrough. We're here for you every step of the way. So it's personal and direct and makes people feel like they've arrived somewhere that they're going to get taken care of. Um, and it has your, you know, the version of you. It has you in there. It has two yours in there. <laughs> so um, it, it doesn't say welcome to her business for, you know, women business owners, which could be anybody. To take their business to the next level to the next by level. strategic objectives with our communication skills. Because at the end of the day, that's what's important. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. All right. So there's you. 
So we've covered you. But there's another word that I want to draw your attention to because it's a real power word and it's definitely not an obvious one. And that word is because. Now, to understand the importance of this word, you have to go back quite a few years to 1977 um, and Harvard University. And researcher Ellen Langer and her team, they ran an experiment where they would cut in front of people waiting in the photocopier line at the library. And so before the internet, the photocopier, and certainly in 1977, the photocopier line was a very busy place to be, especially in universities. And people often had to wait for long periods of time to get a turn. So cutting in front of someone was not looked at favourably. Anyway, um, that's what they did. And they found something really fascinating. When researchers only asked if they could cut in by saying, excuse me, I have five pages, may I use the photocopier? They were only successful in being allowed in 60% of the time. But when they coupled that request with just a simple explanation, excuse me, I have five pages, may I use the photocopier because I'm in a rush? they were successful a massive 94% of the time. And this study went on to prove that as long as we can justify a behaviour in our brains, I'm doing this because, we would usually perform the behaviour. So we need to be giving our customers and prospects a because in order to justify their behaviour. So for example, um, if we're wanting someone to upgrade a service, we might say, Upgrade to the VIP ticket because will you not only get extra bonuses, but you'll also be giving yourself the important message that you're an important person, for example. What we did in there was we gave them the reason and the word because. So if people have a reason for doing something, they're more likely to do it. And that makes because a really powerful word to inject mm. in your copy. Yeah, I just... <clears throat> I just don't think we can use this word too many times, you know. Every time we can justify why somebody needs to be doing something, we move them closer to making a decision. And just a little PS to that story about the photocopy because it's just one of my favourite, favourite studies. Interestingly, you know, um, we were just talking there about the two reasons. One, they didn't give a because, and then the next time they gave a because – there was a third scenario where the researchers gave like a quasi reason that didn't even really make sense. And um, when they did that, like I think it was, um, I can't remember exactly what it was now, but it was, you know, just some word, some quest, some reason that really didn't justify the behaviour. But because they put the word because in there, people heard a justification in their own minds and they got an almost identical success rate to the really kind of legitimate reasons. So it just goes to show how powerful that word because really is. You know, what comes after it doesn't even necessarily have to be that significant for the effect to work. Mm. Yeah, I, I love that story. Um, and what we've given you today are three main things, and there's a whole lot more in your resource list, but what those things were, three things were were zigging when everyone else is zagging, being unapologetically directive, giving people specific instruction. And the third is that it doesn't have to be flashy. And we use the examples of get and of because. And there's quite a few other surprisingly humble but really uh, powerful words that you can use. And they're words like free and instantly and now. Um, and we've got a whole resource um, for you right inside of the Powers resource list. And I'll tell you how to get that in just a moment. But before we do that and before we tell you what's coming up in the next episode, um, I want to give a shout out to one of our listeners and that's Clinton Power who wrote to say that he just loved the latest episode of the podcast and he was specifically referring to the Our Email Newsletters Still Worth Doing episode, which was just the last episode, episode number 46. So if you hadn't had a chance to listen to that yet, you'll find it inside of iTunes and also on our website. So thank you, Clinton, for taking the time to, uh, to let us know. Michelle, what do we have coming up in the next episode? Oh, we've got something really delicious coming up <laughs> in the next episode. <laughs> um, startling? Mm, I don't know if it's startling. I'm just trying to think of a power word that I can use. Inspiring. Uh, we've got a really wonderful episode coming up with my dear friend Victoria Labam, 
who is one of the world's leading you know, presentation experts. She's helped best-selling authors, Hollywood movie directors, business owners, and all kinds of people to create compelling presentations, whether it's for a live event, uh, a, a television appearance, appearing on Oprah, uh, you know, videos, things on the website, anywhere you need to communicate with impact and to influence an audience. And Victoria's going to be sharing her t- top tips for turning every communication opportunity into a work of art. Wonderful. I uh, just recently watched a video that Victoria did, so I know she's going to be amazing on the podcast. So that's coming up uh, in the next episode, which is out two weeks from now. Now, we love to share uh, content tips with business owners just like you, so we would love it if you would leave us a rating or review on iTunes. So if you enjoyed today's episode, we'd love it if you would leave us a rating or review, um, or you can leave a message inside of the Content Sales Podcast Facebook page, which you'll find just by simply looking for Content Sales Podcast inside of Facebook. Um, And of course, if you ask a question there uh, or leave a comment, we're always uh, on the lookout for those and we'll come on back to you. Our free download, our gift to you for today is the Power Word resource list. And it's going to be really handy for you and just a really quick reference guide. So I really recommend you download your copy today. You're going to find it over on our website at herbusiness.com forward slash power words. Michelle, anything you want to say before we go today? Uh, look, I think our, our goal with this episode today was not to rattle off 4,000 million power words. That's why we've sort of put them in the download for you to go and, and um, start checking out and seeing what works for you and what's relevant for you. Really, the goal today was to sort of tune your antenna, get your radar up for where these power words might fit in your business, where perhaps you've got a gap right now where the the content really could do with some powering up. And so it's about creating that space, creating that pause where you go, ah, I need a power word. And then, of course, you can go and use the resource list that we've got as the download uh, to find the specific power word that you need. But the first thing is just becoming conscious that you need one. And I hope that we've um, helped you to sort of make space for that now when you go to create your content. Yeah, I think that filter of am I just talking marketing blah, blah, is is a mm. really good one. And can I find a power word that isn't trite, that isn't overused, that isn't cliched, but that really has me stand out from the competition. We want to thank you so much for listening. We love putting the show together for you. We'll see you next time on the Content Sales Podcast. Thanks for joining us.